a burning tire was thrown on the elephant in order to chase it away. But the tire got stuck on its ears causing the elephant to flee in distress. This event happened at Masinaguri at Nilgiris in Tamil Nadu. The forest officials later found the elephant with severe burn injuries. The elephant died on its way to a medical camp on January 19, 2021. This is yet another incident that portrays Mother Earth as just a planet for humans. Where is this leading us? Shouldn't peaceful coexistence of elephants and humans be the motto? We witness countless acts of animal cruelty regularly, such as elephants getting killed on train tracks, falling into open pits, and yet we remain silent. Humans, we must realize that we need animals for our survival. All life on Earth is deeply interconnected. It is a web of life. So let us get together, join our hands, paws and trunks. So let's make this planet a home for everyone. It's time to rethink and save our planet. The earth is all we have in common. Every living being does one thing throughout their lifespan, that is pause for a few seconds. Breathe in, breathe out. For centuries, our ancestors have been breathing in fresh air free of harmful gases. Ever since mankind invented automobiles, vehicular air pollution has become one of the major concerns across the globe, leaving a negative impact on Mother Earth. With air pollution on the rise, one can only dream about having fresh and free of dangerous gases air. With the urgent need to get immense and life-taking air pollution under control, the government has come up with an innovative way to curb this pollution in today's world. Green tax. A green tax is imposed on the environment in polluting goods and activities to discourage people from this anti-ecological behavior and also to make them sensitive towards the environment. It is also known as the environment tax and the government of India has come up with several rules in this to curb pollution. The central government on 25th January has approved a plan to levy a green tax on old vehicles that are polluting the environment. As part of this proposal, transport vehicles older than 8 years could be charged a tax at the time of renewal of fitness certificate. The tax could be as high as 50% of road tax in highly polluted cities like Delhi and CR. Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari also approved a policy of deregistration and scrapping of old vehicles owned by government departments and PSUs which are above 15 years. The policy will come into effect from April 1, 2022. Along with this, a broad scrappage policy for commercial vehicles is also awaited. With the occurrence of COVID-19 in 2020, the usage of masks and gloves have surged. In order to protect oneself from this deadly disease, it was recommended to wear a mask to protect one's nostril and one's mouth against the spread of this disease. Due to the frenzy brought in by the pandemic, people everywhere became extra protective and started the use of disposable surgical masks and surgical gloves. These masks and gloves are made out of materials such as polypropylene, which take over 500 years to degrade in the ocean. With inadequate biomedical waste treatment plants and an ineffective waste disposal system, this litter is making its way into the ocean. Around 10,000 discarded masks, over 1,000 gloves and PPE kits were found on Mumbai's Juhu Beach in a cleanup drive. Wuhan inhabitants in China produced 200 tons of medical wastes in a single day. The World Health Organization had requested a 40% escalation of disposable PPE production. Plastic and biomedical waste littered near river mouths get washed down the waterways and ends up in the ocean bed during monsoons. While it is dangerous for aquatic lives, it also makes the marine food unsafe as microplastics enter the human chain. These microplastics 
could prove to be carcinogenic in the long term. We need an urgent and coordinated commitment to approach this, including recycling practices and strict policies against plastic pollution. Putting these disposable and single-use plastics to other use would help a great deal to rejuvenate our nature. And now we have something adorable for you. This is surely going to bring a smile to your faces. From the Smithsonian's National Zoo, shows an adult giant panda, Mei Ziang and Tian Tian going all out on the roly-poly snow day activities, sliding, somersaulting and starfishing in the frosting that caked their Washington DC home. Just as forests are called the lungs of the earth, wetlands are the kidneys that regulate water and filter wastes from the landscapes. Wetlands are the primary source of fresh water, buffers of floods, droughts, recycler of nutrients and chemicals, and are interwined with our culture and identity. Around 4.63% of the geographical area of India are wetlands. A total of around 7,50,000 wetlands have been mapped in the country. These ecosystems are among the most ubiquitous but also are quite overlooked despite their increasing confluence with human lives. Wetland includes mangrove, peatlands, marshes, rivers, lakes, deltas, etc. India has a diversity of wetlands ranging from floodplains of rivers like Ganga and Brahmaputra to the high altitude wetlands of the Himalayas lagoons and mangrove marshes on the coastline and reefs. Wetlands are threatened by reclamation and degradation through drainage and landfill, pollution, hydrological alteration, overexploitation of natural resources, resulting in loss of biodiversity. As a part of the natural environment, wetlands are also protected by legislations. The fundamental duties of the citizens are listed in the Constitution of India that it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve natural environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, wildlife, and have compassion 